Uzdemir. It was the mirror. I want to talk about this for a second. Yeah. Because uh, what? It's uh, what? there's new you... details in this whole thing. Where oh, is it really? Knocking out a guy oh, in Florida. Shit. Tell me about that. Uh, the the alleged victim he has told police that he went outside after hearing that a friend of his had been knocked out oh. following a verbal altercation with Uzdemir. Mm. Upon asking who knocked out his friend, the alleged victim says he looked up and was hit in the face. Now, maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Now, the alleged victim says he lost consciousness for 14 minutes. That sounds like something Uzdemir could do. <laughs> and was taken to the hospital and he was treated for concussion symptoms and given multiple staples for lacerations. Okay. He said people present outside told him it was Vulcan Uzdemir who hit him. So he, uh, the UFC is aware of the arrest, they're looking into it. And uh, Cormier did comment. He says, tough to be going through this type of thing, especially at this time when you're on the cusp of the biggest moment of your career. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was self-defense, but because he is who he is, it's much worse because he has the ability to sleep dudes who are trying to hit him. To me, that makes it much better if you can sleep dudes. But who said the whole sleep dudes? Cormier. Thing? Oh, okay. You never know what's happening, but even in these run-ins, that's really unneeded, especially when you're a young guy as Vulcan is and you're on the cusp of something so big for the first time in your career. So basically saying, like, you don't have to do that. But who knows what happened? Like, if there's two guys talking shit... The instinct is... Who's saying he doesn't have to do it? Cormier might have been said it might have been unneeded. Like, he might have been saying he overreacted. Well, like, Cormier was just saying generally, like, when you're in this position... When you're in your Vulcan's 20s in, and yeah. you're going to fight for the championship, you don't want to be knocking Try guys out in a bar. Yeah, 100%, but nobody knows the details. That's yeah, yeah, they're important. figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's so, being in general. Yeah, I mean, listen, obviously you don't want to hit anybody. You yes, you do. I would love to. But I'm <laughs> Unless you make a certain amount of money, then I think you get a pass on smacking people. Yes, that's, the, but that's something else. But we'll talk about that another time. But uh, we talked about that enough. Can I, but, can I just say this? By the way, just a just a legit plug for that uh, that Invicta card. That is December eighth. It's at eight p.m. live on Fight Pass. You can watch that whole card, the Invicta twenty six card. Are they the main event? Fighting. I'm going to watch. She's that not the main event. No. I'm watching that from from Fresno. Oh, Cal that's right. Right. Is that where I'm going to be vacationing. I'm gonna be yeah. I got Aljo <laughs> and Marab fighting, man. That's a vacation. That's a that's a that's a, a working vacation. It certainly is. Well, it's a good time. I like my guys a lot. <laughs> Staring at me, that's Jimmy. What you just said what? He said I like my guys a lot. I like my my. my why are you making weird? My <laughs> guy, my fighters. <laughs> You're just staring at me, Jimmy. <laughs> I wanted Jimmy, to talk because I wanted to bounce something off you. Bounce it right off me. It's something you and Dean Thomas talked about that I oh, sounded like I was out of Dean line. Dean Thomas is my friend. By the way, very important. I don't want to cut you off. Wait, okay. No more Splendor? What? Oh, there's a bag right here. All right. He's well, pointing at a scrotum. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, there's a bag of it. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's raining. It's raining. Throw it at me. Throw it at me. Now, Matt, you, you had commented that yes? uh, you talk thought Colby Co uh, Covington was wrong. So here's what Colby, Colby Covington, this is the update on the situation. I don't necessarily think he was wrong to call the cops. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Uh, he said he was tweeting Woodley and doing all this stuff. He goes, uh, he goes, uh, he's looking down at his phone. The next thing you know, he gets hit in the face. He goes, I stumbled into the middle of the road and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I look up and it's Fabrice Verdum. He goes, oh. he's walking at me with his coach, Rafael Cordero. They're both screaming at me, you're going to die, we're going to kill you. They're walking at me like they're going to jump me. All right. He said, I already got attacked once, meaning Ver Verdum had punched him. He said, Fabricio is still yelling at me, I'm going to kill you for the comments you made. The next thing I know is he picks up this big wooden-ass boomerang and chucks the fucking boomerang at my okay. face. Oh, that was the event, I walked away. I called the police because I had to get the tape evidence. There's a couple of people who saw it out there, John Wood... Saw it. The UFC was believing Verdum's side. I'm like, I'm not going to take tit for tat, my word versus his, because no one's going to fucking believe me. They're going to believe this fucking chump gorilla who's a wannabe aging fighter over me because he's been in the company longer. That's called politics. No one was going to give me videotapes or believe my side. So I had to get the videotapes from the hotel. And the only way I could get the videotapes from the hotel is if I called the police and filed a police report. Sure enough, I filed a police report. I gave an accurate statement. I said everything truthful to the law. And that's how the videotapes came about. It sucks because these people are making assumptions. Oh, Colby, call the cops Covington. But most of them were saying, oh, Colby, you're a snitch. How the fuck are you going to call him a filthy animal and then I expect to get into a fucking fight? I'm like, you don't know my side of the story. I'm just laughing in my head. At the end of the day, the truth will come to light. He can't hide behind that lie forever. That makes perfect sense. Mm. Look, I don't, even if you're a fighter, if a heavyweight comes up and punches you in the face when you're not looking, that's fucking dirty. Now, I'm sorry. Yeah, but wait, listen, that's dirty. So far and you can't got, pick up a piece of wood and throw it at a guy's head. No, we got two sides now. That's but, the thing. Yeah. But one guy wanted the tapes. One guy said, I'll file the police report so we get the tapes. Yeah. Well, obviously, the guy that got hit's going to be... not. The, why, why is Verdun want anything out of that? 
Well, if he was telling the truth, but I mean, like, if you pick up a wooden boomerang and well, throw man, it at I mean, a guy's head, point, well, I don't think they got the. Do they have the film of him getting punched to begin with? They might. They might. If they the do, hotel. if they do, then I'll take back my statement. Yeah, he'll be saying that's going to be released. All he right. said, "I'll release it soon," but, or whatever. But, but also, even if they didn't. Even if it went down the way Verdum said, mm. my problem is if you take a fucking piece of wood yeah. and throw it at a guy's head, like I get that he said Brazilians are filthy yeah. animals and that's shitty. I think they were already hitting each other at that point, though. Maybe, maybe. But if I, you, he again, said he kicked them already. that's something I should have to do because I can't fight. Yeah. When you're the ex heavyweight champion. He I don't think he could get close to him. There was people there. Well, again, then you can't yeah. get close to him. You can't pick yeah. up a piece of wood and throw it at a guy's well, look, fucking skull. A lot, a lot has to be. Uh, Fighter uh, or none. Well, a lot really uh depends on if uh the guy started who who how did that shit start off absolutely like but if Verdum came know? up and shoved him and they yeah. were talking shit that's different that's like the fighter's code like dean said like you know yeah. all right guy comes up and shoves you what yeah. the fuck but if you are if you're fucking if you're arguing and then he picks up wood and throws it at your head yeah. well he's saying he was like looking at his phone he's got punched in the face he said he was tweeting fucking tyron woodley talking shit to woodley <laughs> and all of a sudden he got punched in the face he probably thought wow man that's a powerful Tweet. You yeah. I thought he got tweeted back. Yeah. I don't know. So let's go with that. You know what I think? Yeah, give me something. No, you know what I think of that joke? I think yeah. of that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, I tried. Come on. Not I, true. I tried. Not true at all, Matt. <laughs> but listen, no, seriously. So we like to have fun here. On, yes, we do. Uh, on UFC. The Unfiltered. proverbial ball. So, uh, you know, so Chris, the producer, came to us and he goes, well, I got some new segments. That's not, I don't know how to do it, Chris, the producer. That was a Ray Longo. That was a Ray Longo, the producer. I know one impersonation and it's Longo. Say, what you about one? I'll do Chris. Anyway. Chris said, uh, he had some segment ideas for us and i'm like why don't we say it on air i don't think i said that who said that you i did okay but what did chris say about what did chris I'm say i'm not if, gonna remember in shit what did chris say if it was what did you say if it was a bad segment idea i said if you really hate one it's like all right but we could you know we could talk about that after the show and what did i say <laughs> you yeah. said absolutely not <laughs> yeah. we're gonna trash yeah. it on the air yeah. no, no, if we absolutely hate it and then i i thought that <laughs> would be fun is if we asked the audience what did they think of all these ideas and what would they like that's a great point but uh, well actually it's not a really a democracy though we're yeah, but i would like, like to know what the audience wants to know <laughs> there you go there's also some that the audience could get involved with you know as we'll see okay go through oh that's stuff. so much fun that is all right so let's how are we starting this well i'll just throw some out to you guys i we'll gotta just, we'll go one by one. Oh, all right so I, listen let's keep, keep everybody in suspense, in suspense. Yeah. i'll be two seconds Jeez, i'm gonna go pp2 i almost shit my pants before that was wonderful uh all right now let, i want to go with these segment ideas what are some of these segment ideas what do you think of that i don't know chris over there typing fucking lollygagging um, all right, so we went over, but so there's a couple of games mixed in, just a couple, whatever. We'll just start from the beginning. Okay. So the opening round segment, which obviously it's cute, right? There's an opening round of every fight. Uh, it could okay. be where we already kind of do it, but it would just be like more of a formal thing where I would throw out kind of like rapid fire. Did you, wait, hold on. Did you give the name of it? It's called opening, opening round. round. Yeah. All right. This is going to be called opening round. Okay. So what happens? Uh, I would just throw out like the general discussion topics that I have on the rundown for you guys. MMA news. Ask you kind of questions about that stuff. More just formalize what we already kind of do with the new stuff. You see, you're going to throw the questions out? Yeah, potentially. Yeah. How would, the, how would this segment go? Let's start. Let's try it. Okay. okay. Uh, so... News from Jose Aldo, uh, UFC 218 featherweight title rematch with Max Holloway. He had uh, some interesting things to say about how the first fight went and how it might be different in the second fight. Oh, uh, is this, wait, Here's on, what's oh. happening. Chris wants to be on the podcast more. <laughs> yeah, he's that's, giving himself segment <laughs> ideas. But that's not bad. That's kind of like the news, what we do now. Sure. Right. Do you want to answer that? Are we answering that? Okay, let's do, do it again. I'll show you how we're going to handle that. All right, let's do it again. So Jose Aldo had some interesting things to say about how his UFC 218 featherweight title rematch with Max Holloway would go as compared to the first fight. I oh. know. Fuck, oh, I read the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, exactly. That's how that could go. Yeah. It's called the rundown. <laughs> All right, debatable. Okay. But really quick, though. what, for, what, what Round what, one. Now you got me curious, though. What, what did he say? Well, he was saying after the first fight, yeah, uh, well, and well, which well, you had brought up. Well, he had a leg injury. That, yes, that he wasn't throwing a lot of leg kicks I did in the first fight. Right. And uh, Andre Pedneris, his coach, had said, you know, he had a little bit of an injury Andre. that he was going into that fight, and now he feels he's 100% healthy. His Muay Thai is feeling great, and that he's going to be, uh, you know, a little bit different going into the second fight. Sure, sure. Uh, got my money. Go ahead. Now, what